Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. In this particular video, I'll be talking about this particular common plant known as satin photos. But I basically, this is actually nothing to do with the photos family, which is known as Afferinum. But this particular one is a separate aroid species known as Syndapsus pictus. Exotica, this particular one, and I want to talk a little bit more on how I care for them in my tropical garden. I must say the one of the most unique factor about this particular satin photo is that this one does have its challenges, and I must say that I've actually I had. Um, moments where a lot of it actually has died and this is more of a second set of it and I want to explain to you how I actually cared for it in this particular video. Here you can actually see that this particular plant is actually grown in this particular pot and what I've actually used here as a potting medium is actually coconut chips mixed with sand and at the bottom of it I actually use vermicompost as a fertilizer factor for it uh, but as time goes by I'm actually using slow release fertilizer which is known as osmocord now the factor here is the, what I've noticed is that as the plant grows it actually becomes flat kind of a plant, plant growth in a way I find that this is very much as a crawling plant rather than a climber but once the wine seems to trail out I actually tied it up on a totem pole one thing that I must mention is based on observation I find that this particular plant do not branch out their wines out that means to say that if you were to plant it as a singular plant it will continue to be a singular plant all the way through so and that can be a little bit more on the setback because in case at the root ball or there's a rot take place somewhere in between the whole plant can perish so it is need to take note that you should and i would really recommend to propagate them as many parts of it as possible so that this plant will have a spare plant in case this particular mother plant perish do take note that in this particular video all of these climbers are actually tied together in one particular totem pole here and so this is very much experimental to see how these particular plants especially the climbing types fare in this particular experiment and i find that because uh, due to the factor that these are actually slow growing plants so they are not actually competing with each other in this particular style of growing uh, setup i must say that it's quite interesting to find that when i check through most of the growers and the plant enthusiast when they actually grow their satin photos some of them actually use these particular plant as hanging basket plants but there are also some that actually use that as climber plants especially when they use a totem pole to fasten this particular plant and I want to talk a little bit more on this ex particular experiment here which I actually used here for totem pole I have actually in the first initial factor actually used uh, this particular totem pole where it's fully sphagnum moss and I find that due to the condition of my weather when the moss tend to dry up they somehow turn brittle and in worst case scenario if they are not moist they do turn to be more on a powdery powdery condition and being a bit brittle they somehow fall apart and turn to dust and there were a lot of sort of like holes and a kind of void in between the totem pole and i find that it was not conducive for me to work on it and so i have actually started with this particular style where I actually use a, a kind of a a netting but it's made of plastic and actually fastened too strong uh, kind of a stick in between and I'm actually using uh, the materials that's inside of it are uh, the types that actually conducive for aeroid plants and here I'm actually using fern bark coconut chips pieces of uh, styrofoam and even charcoal and I find that in in this kind of a a mixed media inside of it sort of give a little bit of wet and dry kind of condition and also i have mixed with a portion of sphagnum moss together with it and somehow i find that 
it is, seems to last longer in this particular mix. Now, based on observation, I must say that the roots that appears on this wine don't seem to penetrate into the Tatampo mix and somehow I find that they are still uh, appears to be remaining just a sort of like a snub out, out of it. However, the plant is still alive and I'm actually, as I said, it's very much experimental and I find that as long as it's growing and it's healthy, it's actually fine by me. Anyway, by research, I've taken note that when this root ball actually stick on a flat surface, maybe a flat cardboard or even a flat uh, wall, they seem to have a shingling effect where the leaves seems to sort of like stick against the wall or stick against the surface of that particular growing parts. But when it comes to totem pole such as this, it appears to be a bit longer and the distance between the two leaves appears to be a bit leggy. Anyway, I'm, I'm still looking at it and perhaps I might uh, report them using a flat surface, maybe a plywood on that and observe and see how it actually grows. But for now, I'm actually, uh, as I said, it's very much on experimental value and see how it goes. Now I want to talk about a little bit more on this particular synapsis. If you notice the one on the totem pole and this particular one in a hanging pot, both of them are actually the same plant. And this is what I want to talk about, the variation of the colors and the patterns of the pixelation on the leaves. This is one of the things that's a little bit of a contention where they do change colors and even the patterns as they are according to their growing condition. So there can be a little bit of uh, contention where sometimes a grower or even a novice gardener can get confused and may buy the same plant when they are actually appearing to be almost alike. And this can be one of the problems that I've actually noticed that when it comes to identification, uh, exotica, even a few other types, may appear to be similar but once they all come to a stable growing condition they all will revert back to its original color tones now this can be true is because let's say if you were to buy something which in a very exotic place maybe like indonesia or sumatra and their growing condition there could be on a very high humidity factor the plant may revert to its own growing condition and then once you bring it back to your place and then in your garden condition it could be a matter of humidity or the lighting factor and they can revert back to its own condition so exotica can change its colors and patterns based on the growing conditions now coming back to another type this particular one is known as syndapsus silvery and in a way i can say this is not a common one and if i were to put a, a label to it a common one will be pictus exotica and argeus so this particular one appears to be more like argeus however you find that at the tip of the leaves you will find some a uh, white silvery splotch or spots that is appearing and you also have sort of like a perimeter lining kind of a border around the leaves and this particular one i can say a little bit of a slow growing plant and i can say most of all of these uh, satin photos are actually in a way a slow growing plant however i want to take uh, emphasis over here is that if you are actually growing them and if it's a small cutting i would always want to make a emphasis to make mention that not to over pot it and the one of the best mediums that i actually find that it will be good to grow them using a sphagnum moss mixed with coconut chips and even a little bit of sand but trying to avoid it all cause a normal potting soil because somehow I find that they can actually cause a rotting problem. Another thing that I've actually noticed is that when it comes to propagation, uh, do not just cut and trim and poke them back straight into the potting mix because they can actually have a rooting problem. In a way to say that if the roots does not uh, successfully 
get himself established into the potting media, the plant, the, especially the cutting, can actually perish. One of the most successful methods that I find when it comes to propagation is to use perlite and if you can also use a kind of a humidity box where you can actually put them in a kind of aquarium or even a transparent salad container sort of like give them a very good humidity factor for them to make the root growth to be optimal in their propagation factor if you can notice the roots that is actually appearing especially along the vine if you notice it's just a small primary roots and it does not actually have any major growth on it and this can be very tricky if you were to plan to cut and trim and poke them into the soil factor maybe a high chance would be if you were to get a kind of a clip and poke the whole thing together with the wine into together with the roots into the potting media chances are secondary roots might appear and with those secondary roots they will be have a, a higher chance on success to propagation so these are the tricky factor where a, a, a novice gardener a new beginner might just trim these particular new roots that are sort of like a primary roots and propagate them straight into a potting media without uh, check and balance in a way if there is a lack of humidity these roots will not actually take a root and the whole plant can perish i must say that when it comes to exotica and argius these two are the common one that are easily available uh, where you can actually purchase them in nurseries whereas the other types especially the trubii and even like this silver and or silver lady of any of those kind of slight variation types are in a way fall into more the collector's uh, category and may have to actually hunt for them and in most cases not easily available next in the collection is known as syndapsis through bi moonlight this particular one appears to have more of a glossy kind of effect uh, on the foliage uh, surface when you were to look at the earlier ones they are very much more of a matte kind of uh, features i must say that this particular one can also be very challenging and one of the things about this particular ones when it comes to syndapsis this also is much more slow growing in comparison to the earlier version i must say that this particular ones are considered rare in a way to say when it comes to syndapsis because i find that not many nurseries are actually selling this particular one and i can say yes these are a very new batch that has been introduced as rare plants in the initial stage whereas the satin photos that you seen earlier especially the argeus and the exotica are the common ones one of the most unique factors when it comes to moonlight is that you can actually see a kind of a splash that is appearing on the leaf surface i have not been properly growing this particular syndapsis and you can see that the growing condition is a little bit appear to be more like leggy uh, you may have to look into it by changing the uh, potting medium and set whether to make it more in appearance of a climber or crawler but as for now my concern is to keep the plant alive and so just want to showcase to you in this particular video the next particular one in a, in this particular planter box is actually a, a wild native syndapsis actually i found growing on the roadside and i'm just trying it out and see how it's growing pattern and behavior it can be syndapsis parakinesis or officinalis uh, depending on the growing condition but i'm not really sure how is because it don't appears to be so uh, so I, I believe it's just another type of the trubii which is not yet labeled or catalogued one of the things that i've noticed is that most of these particular ones are actually found in the wild which is not actually introduced as ornamental plants and i find that that is quite intriguing because these are actually native plants here in my region 
If you take notice of this particular one, it's similar like the one is actually grown in a pot in the pot, and this particular one is sort of like have grown well there on a climbing position and you can see the colors and texture on it where it appears to be more like a narrow form and shiny leaves uh, this particular type of syndapsus is still yet to be properly labeled i have my suspicion that it could be trubii moonlight uh, subspecies or of those kind of variation these are actually on a hanging pod and also the growing media is somehow very dry and i often keep it in a way in the condition that i only water it once the medium is fully dried and this is one of the things that i've noticed as most growers tend to mention that when it comes to synapses they normally will only water these plants once it's fully dried on the reverse effect i also noticed that if the growing medium is fairly moist or too wet it can actually cause a root rot. So these are the things that I've actually noticed. It can also be one of the factors that if rot takes place, the whole plant can perish. Next in the collection is Syndapsis trubii dark form. You can notice that this particular one has a, a sort of like a very dark glossy leaf. You can actually, you won't be able to miss this particular feature because this is one of the most outstanding type. And I can say, uh, in the context of rare trubii uh, species, I find that the dark forms appears to be one of the genus that is highly sought after and in a way you can say that it's much more slow growing in comparison to moonlight. And one of the things that I can want to make mention here is that it has very much as a crawling kind of growth effect and the, somehow the root surface seems to be just like a held back at the bottom and and it doesn't seem to climb so much and another factor that i've noticed that is actually a very slow growing plant like any other syndapsis this particular one is another super slow growing plant uh, due to this factor i was not able to actually manage to propagate more of it so i just left the plants that it is and i don't want to take a risk of uh, cutting it due to any factor of stress that i might actually lose this particular plant you can see that i'm actually growing together together with a hoya plant together i just bunched them together and you can also see the variation of a difference between moonlight and dark form in this particular video where you can actually see the difference between their colors and their leaf features one of the most outstanding features are their glossy effect and also the leaf structure where this appears to be a little bit more elongated and shiny I must say that these particular types of plants are very much shade lovers so they can actually do some damage on their leaves if they are strongly exposed to direct hot sunlight so do take note that these are shade loving plants another unique thing that i find that these do not attract any spider mites or even mealy bark on them as pest problems so in a way i can say they are quite hardy plants in pest resistant factor very much earlier i have actually had an experiment where actually using the plastic bottles especially these drinking bottles soft drink bottles and i've actually trimmed them up and actually use a speckler moss tie up together with coconut chips as sort of like an experiment to figure out and see that uh, placing this particular synapses in these containers and i want to see how they actually handle it and at the bottom part of it is actually submerged with water what has actually taken place that over time i have not really able to fully submerge them into full water and i've actually came to a situation where i was too busy and i actually have uh, overlooked the factor where there is no water at the bottom of it and the whole thing have shriveled it up here you can actually see the telltale sign where the leaves have curled up and these are the things that you have to take notice of when these synapses are actually very thirsty and lacking of water in a way you can actually take it for granted it has to say that you can uh, handle they can handle a little bit of an abuse where lack of watering in a way that they can just jump back up once they are so much in water or in heavy watering factor but this is what i want to show to you what takes place when they are in the position where they have not received 
enough watering or no water at all. One of the, this particular thing only applies to synapses. It may not work well with other plants, me and if lack of watering or lack of humidity factor or any of those sorts most of the other aeroids might either turn yellow or drop their leaves so this particular one appears to be very much more like a succulent type of plant which i can say is one of the adaptation where this particular plant has a hardy effect just to take note of this particular synapses are actually sort of like more of a, a year old and you can see their growth factor which is quite slow in the sense i must also mention that i'm not actually using heavy fertilizer on them so I just let nature takes its course of just daily watering and once in a while that i'll just apply orchid fertilizer on them and the other thing that i want to mention here is that this the darker one is Argeus and the lighter one is actually Platinum or Silver Hero. And you can see that this appears to sort of like clump together. And I also use a lot of tying up them together just to keep the root ball together as close as possible with the potting medium. And these are the things that I noticed when it comes to synapses which I mentioned earlier. Their roots do not really go deep. So hence, they very much the roots appears to be more of a surface kind of a thing where they just absorb their uh, nutrients or even water just by getting wet upon their plants. So this is one of the things that I noticed when it comes to synapses that these plants can easily get rot if they are over water or sitting in water for a very long time so what i have done here to handle the situation here is that i actually get a half bucket of water and i've actually submerged them and placed them in and let the potting media soak up all the water in because somehow i find that just by heavy watering may not do the trick because when the medium is too dry the water may take some time for it to be soaked up and especially when it comes to cocoa chips and sphagnum moss once they are fully dry uh, the ability for them to absorb water by just uh, spraying water on them may not be effective because it will just be surface spraying so i actually place all of them uh, for soak for one day and you can actually see that the results of it in a way that the plant has perked up and opened up and appears to be very much health healthy looking and also all the potting media that has been submerged in the water have absorbed all the nutrients and i really don't have to be so much concerned and over watering them at least for two to three weeks time Another factor here is that when you find that this particular syndapsis, when you actually grown long, sort of like leggy and appears to be more than five to six nodes, you can actually trim them and propagate them. Uh, and I find that these are one of the most important things to take note of when it comes to propagation. I will normally use pure perlite, 100% perlite and a little bit of uh, water that is submerged at the bottom and just leave it for two to three weeks or maybe even a month and do check on it uh, on a weekly basis or three to three days once to make sure that there is enough water or moisture in the polite now this is one of the things that i want to mention is that uh, when it comes to synapses it may not do so well with other potting media especially like uh, potting soil because somehow i find that uh, when it comes to new beginners or those people who are not familiar with it may think that it is similar like another photos family or ephephrenum or even philodendron and may not be that hardy in the context where they are root hardy so this is where you might lose an expensive plant if you were to just trim it and uh, poke it back at the uh, same uh, container or a, a growing pot this is one of the things that i want to make mention and make an emphasis of it not to do so because you may not really actually notice that the root has not taken uh, 
establish itself into the pot and slowly the leaf will shrivel and in most cases that once the leaf has perished and you can just have a little bit of a wine there which is like sort of like a naked empty wine and it will slowly turn yellow and that is one of the challenges that you might face and it can look very unslikely and not attractive so this thing that i want to say that if you want to keep uh, synapses full do trim it and place it uh, separately in uh, growing in polite and another factor here is to have a propagation box something like a container and closing it so that it has optimum humidity factor do also keep them in bright indirect light so that it will not uh, perish due to lack of light and somehow i find that rot can take place very easily if lack of lighting is a challenge for the growing factor the other thing that i must mention to you here is that once you establish you see an establishment of strong root ball taking place and this particular plant is actually ready for transplant here in this portion i've actually tied it up and sort of like uh, retie them back to keep it bushy and appears to be a little bit more neater nice and i could have actually trimmed these particular portions and use it for propagation but as for now i just want to keep all of them together and you can actually see the rgs and also the Platinum is doing so well now after the water submission for one day. Just want to talk a little bit of Syndapsis Platinum or Silver Hero and I find that they do tend to have very much of a silver milky sheen on it and there are some vari uh, variations on it where a little bit of a green appearance that comes at the midrib and some of the portion that has a little bit more of the green tone appearance on the foliage. Now one of the things that I can say here is that you can actually hunt for them and find that there are so many different varieties and one of the things that I am would give a little bit on a caution and sort of like be very careful on a singular node uh, plants that has been put for sale because you may not actually know once the plant has established itself because sometimes the variation appears on a singular node plant leaf and once the plant has grown bigger you might totally see something else altogether so do take note on that if at all you were to come across that for sale uh, do be cautious about it maybe you can actually ask the vendor to sh show you the full plant on the appearance because uh, singular leaf may not actually uh, you may not able to identify and say that the whole plant is actually uniform because each leaf can actually have a unique features and somehow i find that when you are actually purchasing them it can be a factor where they can actually either revert back to a parent plant which altogether appears to be a totally different uh, appearance from a singular node finally coming to a singular node plants this is the ones that i actually found sold in a plant fair and you can see the price is quite sold in a high premium prices for a singular node plant this particular one is syndapsis mayari and i find that this is one of the rarest types there are other ones others that is identified as aura and mint and few other colorization that appears to be so and do take note that those syndapses do have is stable irrigation types the high uh, the high level of uh, very colored variation such as the yellow and the white ones are very very slow growing and also very unstable in a way to say that if there is a lack of color or lack of something of it uh, essential for their growing condition they may lose their variegation so these are the things why these particular plants especially this uh, variegated syndapses have is high premium prices for these reasons because of their uh, rare condition uh, growing factors i've now come to the end of my video and this is the part that i would really like 
to ask you for your favor. And if you really can, I would really appreciate it very much that if you can actually subscribe to my channel. And this actually helps the YouTube algorithm to sort of like select and show the element of traffic that takes place in my channel. And this would actually create more awareness for all the other gardeners here who may able want who may want to see more of the detailed information on my garden space and hence when there's a lot of traffic this will actually help to garner more interest in my channel one of the factors that i've actually noticed is through the analyst is that i only find that only two percent of the people here who actually does click like and subscribe to my channel hence i would really like to make a emphasis here for your request and if you really like my video and if you find that my videos and my channel is beneficial and helpful for your gardening experience and you look forward for looking into my garden space i would really appreciate seriously if you can click like and subscribe to my channel and do place in your comments and i will more than happy to entertain and indulge myself in putting in all the queries in according to your questions based on my experience and my knowledge also i would really like to request that you do check out in all your other videos here which is under popular and most viewed and see if at all any plants that actually garner your gardening experience Thank you so much for your support and see you again in my next video. Take care and have a nice day. Bye.